So let's start with the hands-on on how to build a composite device. So the most important thing I showed you in the initial slides was related to uh, the fact that with this USB X stack, we can very easily create a device uh, with uh, more than one class in parallel. So in this case, in our example, with USB X native support of multiple classes and integration of STM42 Cube MX, you will see how easy it is to integrate and generate firmware for USB composite device. So with our previous library, you had different manual changes. In this case, into EastCube Azure Artos H7 pack, you already have examples like the one that I'm pointing you to here for HID CDC ACM. So you already have an example. We are basically going to replicate this, uh, this example. I'm going to explain you how to generate the code, how to build and how the application is made. There will be some differences versus the original example that we distributed uh, that I'm going to underline. And in terms of functionality, so apart from building a composite device, in terms of functionality, we are going to test the um, right functionality of the two classes on HID by seeing periodically the mouse moving and it's moved from the HID device. So it's mimic a mouse and the CDC virtual com port is going to echo the incoming data packet. So very important for uh, this part, you will need a second USB cable. I can anticipate you that should be connected to CN13, which is the USB connector on the opposite side of uh, the ST link. So the one you should have currently connected. It's the connector which is on the side of the RJ45 uh, Ethernet uh, connector. And another thing that I'm going to show you is that this time, just to show you a different tool, we are going to start with CubeMX. So I'm going to start with CubeMX. Of course, the two approaches are similar, if not uh, identical. You can, of course, follow along even with the simple Cube IDE, but I want to show you CubeMX, which is uh, a, a tool uh, uh, which is actually integrating uh, different parts from which you can start the project you see in uh, in different ways. So in this case, I'm going to start from the MCU selector. So please select to access to MCU selector. And another different thing that uh, uh, we're going to do is that here we want directly to start from the, the chip, not from the Nucleo, because we will start from an empty project. So you can type H273VG and select the VGTX device. OK, after that, you can just click here and start the project. So select. STM 32. I think I pick up the wrong one. It's ZG. Sorry, right? ZGTX. Select the 723ZGTX and start the project. Okay, good. So we have the usual helicopter view of the chip. Uh, now we should concentrate on configuring uh, the, the peripherals that are needed to run uh, this uh, demonstration. So as a first thing, we are going to go into connectivity. We select USB OTG high speed and we want to enable the internal FI for device only. So be sure to select internal full speed FI device only and not the external. Once you have selected device only, you will see the data pins of the USB mapped to PA12 and PA11. So if this is done correctly, please do, do not forget to enable the global high speed uh, interrupt. You can enable it from here or eventually you can also go for an alternative, which is system core nested vector interrupt controller. You can flag it from here. 
So here you have the old interrupt table and now we are enabling just the HS high speed USB global interrupt. So we are now at slide number nine of our presentation. So we know that precise clock are mandatory for uh, USB application. In general, for implementing a host, you will need an high speed external clock, but for a device, you can uh, typically use HSI 48 plus an external low power uh, crystal oscillator like in STM 42L4. But in case of uh, STM 42H723, you can use HSI and the clock recovery system. So on RCC, which is uh, here, which is a reset and clock controller, you can go to clock recovery system, sync and select USB high speed. So the goal of clock recovery system is actually to obtain a precise enough clock signal to be used by the USB module without the need of any external resonator component. So the preference main function are basically its ability to trim the internal oscillator on the fright. So in this way, we can uh, meet the USB protocol requirements and have enough uh, information available for the user and basically no issues into the USB communication. So this is just to give you a little bit of background on why we are doing this. As said, we need uh, the clock recovery, but we also need to clock the peripheral with the HSI 48. So please click to clock configuration. We do not want to run automatic clock solver, so please click no if uh, a pop-up like that one appears. Here, for those who are new to the STM42 architecture, you have the clock tree. You see here HSE, LSE, uh, you have the different clock sources inside the pin and you see how the dividers are set to be distributed to the various bus on the MCU, peripheral bus or to the AXI. You will also see that you have some output pin because you can basically enable the main clock output on, on some of the pins. This feature is available in most of the STM32 devices. What we want to do in brief is scroll a little bit down, go to USB section, and configure the HSI 48 clock for the USB. Once you do that, you receive a 48 megahertz um, reported into the USB block. So it means that you have clocked it correctly with the 48 megahertz. So still being on the clock tree, we want to set the full clock frequency. So the minimum high clock frequency for uh, OTG is uh, typically uh, is 14.2 megahertz. Here we just want to run at full speed. So let's write into this box 550 and press enter. If you got a warning like I am getting, just click on OK and uh, the tool will automatically look for a solution. And I can tell you that the solution will be switching the source of the system clock MOOCs from HSI to PLL. You will see that the PLL uh, here will become uh, blue. We will uh, select the right dividers to achieve the, the wanted high clock frequency. Very good. So we can come back to pinout and configuration. Let's go back to pinout and configuration and let's click on software packs. And the usual select component you have seen uh, before. So as I told you initially, we still do not have a bare metal implementation of this middleware. So for that reason, we are going to use ThreadX APIs and uh, you need to enable the ThreadX core. This is very important to do. And you have now to go to USBX that you will find uh, in a tab right after file system interfaces. And here we want to enable the core system. We want to enable the device core stack. And we want to enable the device controller. Regarding the specific classes, we want to go for 
device class HID and device class CDC HAM for the virtual COM port. So maybe here there is a lot of, of settings to be done so I can enlarge a little bit the screen so you all can see. You have to select the first core system, then the core stack, of course, the controller, which is linking the middleware with the a physical peripheral, HID class, and then CDC HAM class device role. So pay attention because on the middle of the chart, you will have the host roles. You, you have to select the device because we are going to build the device. And I click OK now. I think you have learned along the workshop that once we enable the software pack, we have some new modes to be selected here into this tab. And in our case, we have both ThreadX and USBX. In Azure Artos application, we want to uh, set the memory pool size for the USB device, and uh, we are going to put 8224. It's 18224. Uh, this is the memory needed for the USBX application. And at the end of the presentation, we will analyze in detail why we are using this amount of memory and how this can be optimized. Uh, so don't worry, it's not a magic number. You are gonna seek, you are gonna see in detail uh, why and where does this number come from. On ThreadX, we don't touch anything. Instead, we have to go now to the USBX table. So in the USBX chart, please be sure to select class driver two because we are actually implementing two classes. And this is at the level of device core. Then for HID, we do not touch anything. And on CDC HM, uh, ACM, we, uh, we want to modify the endpoints number. So currently in the USBX middleware, the same endpoint cannot be used for in and out endpoint at the same time. So maximum number of USB endpoint is defined by four bits. So from zero to number 15. And uh, for in uh, STM42 USB, we can use uh, a maximum of eight in and eight out endpoints. Uh, so what we are going to do here is that you see that there are some endpoints in numbers that are replicated for the different functionality, command or in and out. Uh, so we have to modify those. So instead of one for the in common address, we are going to put endpoint number two. For the endpoint in address, we are going to assign number three. And for endpoint out address, we are going to assign number four. So usually we are going to use uh, successes number is some starting from one. And in this case, what we did simply was to use endpoint one in for uh, HID, endpoint two for command and control of CDC, and in point three and four for in and out of CDC HAM. Uh, later on, I'm going to explain you what we did practically, but so far the important message is that in USBX, the same endpoint number cannot be used for in and out at the same time. So two, three, and four. In class CDC HAM, we have not touched HID and we want to use two classes. I'm going to move to the last step, which is a known step system. We want to use a timer for the time base. So we are using timer six because it's basic timer, as you see here. So we don't want to waste resources. You could have used any other basic timer like timer seven. Good. So the configuration is now complete, meaning that we have now to move to project generation. So please click on project manager and go to project and give your example a name like uh, uh, I can call it USB X 28 
than as of the, as the date of today. Uh, we want to generate the project for STM42 Cube IDE. Keep everything as default. We can keep even the default IP and stack settings as memory allocation is now handled directly in Azure middleware. And we can now move to code generation. On code generator, we flag the option generate peripheral initialization as pair of .c and .h files per peripheral. This is needed due to the architecture of USB examples. Please flag generate peripheral initialization as pair of .c and .h file. Then let's move to advanced setting and uh, on uh, the rank number three, MX USB OTG HS PCD init, uh, please click on do not generate function call. We do not want to generate this because uh, uh, the PCD init is called directly from uh, app USB X device C. You will see later in detail. If you got to this point already, you can of course click to generate code. And uh, the magic will happen and uh, the code will be generated in uh, your root directory. And you are going to get now a pop up window right after a code generation saying if you want to open the folder or open the project. So now we open the project. We're going to get a screen like this. I'm going to press on launch. OK, so we have successfully imported the project, which is very good for us to keep on going. OK, so I show you the structure. The structure is the one that uh, we already seen from before. So actually in the source uh, we have the main.c, but then we, we directly jump into the operating system and the entry point for our USB app is actually into USB uh, app uh, folder USB X device.c. So this is the uh, main file in which uh, we have to work on and you see it's completely empty. So we need to create our own application and uh, for saving some in order to to save some time we have prepared a copy folder content into the installation material that we provided for the webinar so i'm going to share you a slide to show you where you should find the files so the default path files to be copied are contained in azure artos workshop material and so on usbx usbx copy files. So please go there. It's clear that we need to copy this file into the project folder. So there are several ways to do so. If you want to follow along with me, what we are going to do is that basically we are going to take our files from the repository and we need to copy them into the project folder. So in my case, I'm going to open, I'm going to click on properties. I will go to the project folder. And I will go to USBX. App and uh, OK, this is my. Project and on the other end. This is instead my source folder, so. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to take these files and I'm going to bring them into the project. I will replace the files in the destination. And now I go back, close, I go back to the project, right click on it and press refresh. And now I should see something in app USB X device.c, meaning that we have copied correctly the file. Now 
all is set to run your project into STM32H723. So please just directly run the project with the play button. This will build and will uh, program the STM32H723 uh, via stlink v3. So it's going to take some time. OK. So anyway, if you have uh, got to this point, it's so just really a matter of debugging, uh, but the, everything is set to theoretically have the code generated correctly. Maybe just one thing, I spend another minute and then I move forward. One thing will be to check if you have uh, correctly set the do not generate function call on advanced setting for the USB OTG and uh, uh, generate peripheral initialization as a pair of .c.h file per peripheral. This is just an idea. I'm not sure this is going to help you, but to review the whole passages where we inc are including some .h file, it's this passage here. Anyway, the idea is you are at 80% of the work. The, uh, the remaining 20, 25 minutes will be on showing you what we did in practice, so the showing you the functionality. And the second step, just uh, going through the code to explain you what every line of this app USB uh, X underscore device does. So we can for sure review offline or after the webinar uh, workshop, we are going to have uh, uh, 30 minutes for open discussion. So this definitely this will be a good point to, to review. But I'm sure that you can anyway follow along because I'm going to show you basically how it works practically, what we did practically, and uh, good, someone solved it, and how to move along uh, reviewing uh, the, the various parts and the various portion of the code. So we have implemented a mouse. So first thing is go to control panel, click on control panel uh, of your Windows machine, uh, hardware and sound, device and printers. You should see STM42 USB device, which is exactly the one that we just uh, created and uh, you see the functionality here is is pretty nice. So our mouse cursor is moving once every five seconds. We decided to put this periodicity to helping you anyway to <laughs> to use the mouse while the board is connected. But you see the mouse is moving nicely uh, once every uh, five seconds if you don't touch it. So HAD is there. Now let's go and see uh, if uh, CDCACM virtual com port is there, I'm going to use a terminal view. For me, is termite. Before doing that, we need to know exactly where uh, the serial port is connected. So please go into your device manager and uh, have a look at the com port. You see, you should have at least, uh, I would say, at least two com ports one for the ST link and as a, a new serial com device. This is the VCP for the STM42H7 we created. So it means we need to connect to COM7. So I'm going to go to COM7 and I will enable the echo. So I'm going to write something and uh, I'm getting the echo back. So it means that the CDC uh, ACM VCP is correctly implemented and we have two classes working in parallel on the same USB device. And uh, you have seen how, how quick and easy it is to deal with this composite device using a ThreadX and uh, the integration of CubeMX. Um, we are going to focus on uh, what we cut and pasted. So I have uh, basically just cut and paste some code, but I really want to go through it to explain you exactly what uh, we did and how it, this is implemented. So we saw that the entry point is up USB device dot C and uh, you see that uh, the interesting part starts from line 108 where we have the definition of string descriptor and uh, device descriptor. So we have descriptors for full speed 
and high speed USB. Of course, uh, the high speed is uh, redundant, but mandatory for the USB high speed interface. So in terms of, of the optimization, high speed part can be skipped. And then we have the uh, string framework and the language ID uh, framework uh, defined here, and uh, which are these two parts. So just to show you in picture, this is the flow we have, we are following. You will see a very similar picture into uh, the Microsoft documentation. So now we are at the device descriptor level. We have defined the device framework for high speed, full speed, the string and the language framework. OK, now we have to go to move forward. And as a first thing, we have to define this number here. BNAM configurations. So the USB device can have multiple configuration which are not used in parallel, but are embedded in the device and decided by the host. So I would say mutually exclusives. This is not our use case, so we are going to use just one configuration. So in our case, BNUM configuration will be equal to one. Please remember this number because we are going to use it in a few minutes. And uh, now that we have defined that we are going to just use one of the two gray blocks, we have to define the interface descriptor. So we are going to have three interface descriptor one for HID, one for the command signal of the virtual COM port, and another one for the data with the related endpoints descriptor. So if this is clear, and this is the track of what we are going to do, and actually what we have already done, and we have to just uh, understand a little bit more in detail. So right after the uh, descriptor initialization, we pass this descriptor to the stack. So we are going to go through this function later on. For now, it's sufficient to understand that we call inside this function the middleware, the middleware in it. We are going to also see how much memory we are going to use in this step. So we pass to the stack the descriptor and we initialize the middleware. Now that the descriptor are uh, initialized and passed to the middleware, we are going to initialize the classes. The first class is definitely HID. So we assign to HID the mouse report uh, descriptor, its length, its report ID, and the callback. So the class callback in HID, if you do control click, is empty. There's just a return zero. Another interesting thing to notice is that we initialize the HID class and the class is connected to interface zero, which is this number here, and to configuration number one, because as I said at the beginning, we are just using one configuration. So configuration starts from one and interface number starts from zero in this stack. And here you see how we are basically adding an error handler on each and every step. So the error is propagated uh, on the whole level of the stack. So this gives you a, an idea on the robustness of the USB X stack. So let's go back to our picture, which is very helpful, I hope. We have defined the device descriptor. Now we are at uh, class initialization. So we are defining uh, the HID interface on interface zero. You will see that CDC ACM will use two interfaces, interface one and interface two. So here you will have one one and one two. And uh, HAD will only have one in and point and uh, CDC will have one in and point for commands and one for data in and one for data out. So in total, four endpoints are uh, used. We are not going to use at all the second branch because we are just using one configuration. So we have initialized the class, but uh, now we have to create uh, the thread that are going to handle the classes and their functionality. So we are now going to jump into a section of the code where there are functions that should sound familiar to you. We are going to initialize and allocate, uh, first of all, the stack for the thread, which is the main USB app thread entry. 
And uh, basically, as you see here, we allocate the memory and we create the thread as, as we saw before. As you have already seen this uh, thread create function, we also have another thread, which is HID USB X up thread entry, for which we are allocating the, the stack and we are uh, we are creating the thread. So I, I can tell you that the first thread, so up USB thread entry is the main thread where we initialize the USB peripheral. Uh, we determine the, the type of I, the endpoints, the DMA used, it's initialized only one time for the whole application. And for HID, we have uh, a dedicated thread, which is uh, USB HID thread entry. So um, the entry function are clearly USB up thread entry and USB HID thread entry. So in case of single class device, you see how it easy it is. So it will be all, but we are creating a composite device. So everything I told you regarding class initialization, registration of the classes and uh, thread creation is exactly identical for the CDC. You see the CDC has interface number one and uh, we are creating a new thread for it, just one, because the previous one that was uh, up thread entry is used only one for the whole application. So in this case, we have USB CDC HCM thread entry, priority 22. Priority is higher here because uh, Instead, the mouse is refreshed once every five seconds, so it doesn't need high priority. Just a note, I told you that there is an already an example existing on uh, CDC ACM plus HID composite device. This is making actually use of two threads because normally you would have one thread for TX and one thread for RX. As here we are using the echo, we are just creating one thread for the communication. So as promised, we are going to jump into the entry function of the threads we created. So the first one is USB up thread entry. You see that it starts with a delay with a slip actually, which is uh, not mandatory. Actually, it's used to let other part of the system initialized before USB communication starts. And then it calls MX USB device in it. If we go into it, you see that we have this power enable USB, USB voltage detector, uh, which is power enable for USB peripheral, and it's uh, needed for H7. And we have uh, USB OTG HS PCD in it, uh, which is USB peripheral in it, based on the setting we did on Cubemax. And then we allocate the memory USB peripheral used for the endpoint with the HAL PCD set TX50. And we also have the UX DCD STM42 initialized, which is a function in USB-X, which is initialized in the STM42 USB peripheral. And then we have the HAL PCD start, which is starting the USB device. So you now understand why this is just called once in the application. Then for the two threads belonging to the class, the flow is identical. So Instead of class here, you could have HID or CDC, imagine, but the flow is identical. So we check if the device is configured, we pick the data interface used by the class, we check if the user interface has expected class parameter, we do some action and we add some uh, uh, sleep. HID uses actually interrupt points, which are periodical, and uh, CDC actually is not periodic. So in case of CDC, only user thread is used. So this is the prototype of a class thread function. You can imagine the same for uh, CDC and for HID. So we check if the device is uh, correctly configured. We get the data from its interface number. We check if the data are the one that we are uh, expecting, and then we perform some, uh, some action. So in case of HID, the action can be move the cursor once every five seconds. And in case of CDC, the action can be writing back the data buffer that we get from the virtual COM port. In fact, uh, you should uh, expect to 
get the data from the right interface number that uh, you have set initially. So, as I told you in a USB CDC ACM, uh, we basically have a portion of the code that I can show you here, uh, which is echoing back the message. So, if we go to the CDC ACM entry function of the thread, you see that we have uh, check if the data com if configure. We compare it to memory block to see if the data we are getting are the one that are expected. And then what we do is read and uh, write back the same buffer and go to sleep. In case of uh, the HID, instead you will see that in uh, HID thread entry there is a, a, the body of the of the thread is actually getting the sending the event uh, once every five seconds to move the mouse. So there is a device connection check. There is a, a selection of the right interface. And uh, then there is the class section and at the end we have the five seconds delay, which is the one that makes our cursor move. So, as I promised, I need to explain a little bit uh, the memory consumption and the reason of that magic 18,224 number. Uh, so, in this case, overall memory consumption with GCC normally optimized for size, with the default Q parameter is around 36K of RAM, 27K, sorry, 36K of flash, 27K of RAM. With a little bit of optimization, we can go down to 14 K bytes. If compared with uh, our current stack implementation is a little bit high, uh, the consumption, but this is the price to pay for the quality. So uh, you saw how robust it is. You see all the certification tests. You see, you saw how uh, the error is propagated across the different levels of the stack. So it's clear that this will impact a little bit the footprint and uh, mm, you see uh, that uh, actually the tables shows the consumption of the various element and uh, we have around 15 k bytes of uh, allocated memory for uh, USB X. So this is the consumption for every function and uh, there are basically three points to be underlined the transfer uh, request buffer, uh, which is uh, by default uh, 256. This defines uh, the maximum number of bytes received on a control endpoint in the device stack. And the default is 256 bytes. Uh, so this is the one that is uh, impacting uh, a little bit more. Then endpoint data memory. Uh, which is uh, by default uh, 2048. It's the space for each uh, user endpoint for our full speed device. So this is another value that is impacting uh, uh, a lot into the memory allocation for uh, this functionality. So just one note, the X and RX CDC threads are currently not used, so this can be further optimized. Uh, so the total here will be this explain the 15 K bytes are located for USB X. And with that, we are done for uh, this uh, section on USB. I leave you here with uh, a link to the uh, very complete Artos uh, USB X documentation on Microsoft website. STM 42 wiki USB page. That uh, is a good summary of what I've just uh, showed you. In fact, if you go straight to the page, you will see all the contents that we spoke about, which are also, uh, I mean, uh, giving additional explanation to the examples, uh, which are included in our H7 pack and are basically these ones. You see the one that it's closer to what we implemented today is this one, UX device, HID, CDC, ACM. And last but not least, I leave you the link to the directly to the example project in Xcube Azure Artos H7 package. Having saying that, I would like to thank you 
for the attention.